Blog Talk Radio. Hello out there, everybody. It is Thursday, April 5th, 2012. I am David Domzowski, founder of the Financial Bin and host of Financial Bin Radio. This is our second installment of Baseball and Business as we celebrate MLB's opening week here at the Financial Bin. Uh, earlier this week on Monday, we sat down and, and talked with Todd Stottlemyre as he gave us a, an account of what he's been doing since he retired in, in 2002. If you had, haven't gotten a chance to check out that interview, it's up, uh, up live on FinancialBin.com right now. Now, before I introduce you to today's guest, let me share some quick notes with you. First off, don't forget to pick up your copy of Entrepreneur Intervention, Triumphs and Failures of Entrepreneurs. You can do so for just 99 cents on Apple's iBookstore, Kindle, and other e-readers. All you got to do, go to financialbin.com, click on the book section at the very top next to the login button for more information. And also, don't forget, you can also pick up a paperback copy of that book for just under $10 at Amazon and CreateSpace. Now, secondly, we're in the finalization process for Landlord Intervention. This is a book by Joseph L. Brown, a gentleman who has been in the real estate rental business for over 20 years. He gives you a fantastic step-by-step how-to guide for you to begin your own career as a landlord. We plan to release this book in May 2012 as well. Now, finally, we're in the collecting we're collecting submissions still for wealth intervention, and we plan to release this book, what's going to actually be the third installment in the intervention series later this year. And we're waiting on our guest today. His name is Chris Kempel. Chris is the general manager of the Wilmington Blue Rocks, the Class A advanced affiliate of the Kansas City Royals. Chris, welcome to Financial Bin Radio. Uh, David, how are you? I'm good. Uh, let, let's get right into it. Um, the, the first question I have for you, Chris, is can you take us through your career leading up to becoming GM of the Blue Rocks? Uh, absolutely. It all uh, it all started back in uh, 1980s. I think it was 1988, Dave. I was uh, just graduated from um, from San Diego State with a degree in journalism. Right out of school, I got this terrific job uh, as a dishwasher. Um, a restaurant, and I was there for about six months, and realized this isn't what I want to do. And um, I'd always, I'd always been interested in, in sports, and you know, played sports in in high school, and um, uh, you know, big sports fan as a kid, following the Angels and the Dodgers and the Lakers. Sure. And um, I decided, you know what, I, um, you know, I, I didn't know much about sports administration, but you know, I knew when I always went to games, you know, people worked there, so um, I figured, you know what, let me. Let me put my resume together and and um, start sending it out to, uh, to to all the teams that I you know that I like. So I I did so and figured it would uh, you know it would take you know a couple of weeks or maybe a month and you know by that time the Dodgers would probably be calling me asking me for their uh, to, to hire me as their director of public relations and uh, I can <laughs> say that 26 years later I still haven't got that phone call but. Um, Somebody had, somebody had mentioned to me about uh, you know say hey, you may want to pursue minor league baseball teams so that's what I did and, and it, um, my first job was, was basically an intern with a team in, in Palm Springs California and uh, in, in short Dave just really liked what I did did just about anything you possibly could think of um, and uh, you know said told myself that before I before I got out of minor league baseball I want you know one day I want to say I was a minor league baseball general manager and that happened a couple of years later when I went to, to Butte, Montana, was a GM of the team, uh, the Butte Copper Kings, the Texas Rangers affiliate, and uh, I just kept with it. was there for a couple of years, moved back to California with another team um, in Modesto, then moved to um, a team in Virginia, and it was with that team in 1992 in, in Hampton, Virginia, that was purchased and relocated to Wilmington in 1993, and when that happened, I moved here in 93, figuring... I would be in Delaware for a couple of years and, uh, you know, eventually make my way back to California. And uh, here we are uh, on the verge of going on our, my 20th season here in Wilmington. Oh, wow. I was going to ask you how long you've been there. So, so Chris, as GM of the Blue Rocks, what are your primary responsibilities? Yeah, it, it, essentially, I oversee our full-time staff, and we run the business operations for the Blue Rocks. And if you were to, to break that down into its simplest forms, we essentially do four things. We we sell tickets, we sell advertising, we sell food and beverage, and we sell merchandise. And that's what uh, you know. That's what we oversee. And, and, and the, my boss always tells me every year that my job is to make sure that our revenues exceed our expenses by as much as possible. So that's what uh, you know. That's what we focus on. Are those areas, obviously, it's a lot more than that when you get into operations. And right. uh, but essentially, you know, the, the the most important thing we do. 
and the most important thing any you know any pro- professional sports team does, regardless what level you're at, is sell tickets. You know, that's that's our bottom line business is selling tickets and getting people to the stadium. And you know, once we get them here, showing them a good time, um, keeping them entertained, and obviously, uh, you know, if that goes well, they they keep coming back. You know, actually, to build off that that question a little bit in your answer there, can, can you tell us how how running a minor league baseball team is like a business? Well, it's it's very much you know it is a business. Um, you know, we, right. you know, I pay close attention to all our expenses, all our revenues. You know, trying to come up with creative ways to to drive revenue, to increase revenue. You know, obviously the the I would think that one of the advantages of the fun things working with a minor league baseball team is that you get to do a lot of creative things to try to drive in revenue. And um, um, but you know it's very you know we are. Um, you know, kind of operate this as a small business. You know, watch every right. every nickel that that walks out the door, and uh, again, just trying to you know doing anything we can to, to to you know increase our revenues while at the same time trying to decrease our our expenses. Now, now, does does the major league club help help out with that in any way, or is it do you have a separate budget completely? Uh, well, we we have our own budget, but we do in some ex- uh, we we are I guess subsidized, if you will. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's the right word, um, okay. but I guess I can use it for now. Subsidized by Major League Base or by the, our, our Major League affiliate, in our case, the Kansas mm-hmm. Kansas City Royals. And that the Royals do pay all the salaries for the players. They pay all their mm-hmm. medical expenses. They pay all the salaries for the coaches, the trainers. Um, they um, we you know we. There's a uh, we split um, baseball bats and, and mm-hmm. uh, baseballs that are used. Uh, the Royals will pay all the meal money, but we we pay most of the hotel expense and the charter and bus. So there are some things that that we you know that are that sort of fall on our side side of the ledger. But we are uh, again the Royals do pick up some of the expenses and obviously the biggest expense is the, the, the player salaries. We we do not pay the salaries for the players. Okay. Okay. So, how would you say you know the job of a minor league GM is different or similar to the job of a major league GM? Well, I can I can assure you, Dave, there are absolutely no similarities whatsoever. In what I do, okay. Okay. A minor league general manager, as to what you know a, a major league general manager does. You know, if I were to use the example of Ruben Amaro Jr. Mm-hmm. right up the road here, the, the general manager of the Phillies, you know, his job is to you know, basically get the best twenty five players he can find. Uh, put them on a field and hope that they win a championship. All right? um, an analogy I like to use is my job is to get the best 25 concession workers I can find and hope that they serve, uh, you know, serve quality food. You know, the, sure. I don't have anything to do with the players, the team, uh, none of that. Now, obviously, there's a lot of interaction, but we don't. You know, if, if our team goes 140 and zero, wins the Carolina League Championship, that is not a reflection on me whatsoever. Um, right. Uh, and you know, conversely, if we lose every single game of the year, and um, uh, you know, again, that's not a reflection. I don't. My 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 job is judged on uh, you know revenues and bringing people into the stadium, and um, you know, probably a, a better a better job or a better title for me would be something along you know director of business operations. That's that's basically what I am. I'm not a. Okay. My title as general manager is, is a bit of a misnomer in the in the way you know the, the general manager term is is, is used. You know, again, I don't I don't have anything to do with players. It's all handled by the Kansas City Royals. So so how do you go about drawing people to the ballpark? You know, in in what ways do you market the team to attract the fans? Well, we uh, first and foremost we we market uh, the inexpensive, um, affordable. Uh, an, an inexpensive, affordable place to take your family, um, and we also market the entertainment aspect of the of the team. We don't we don't market our players. We don't really market our opponents. You know, you know, if we if we play the the Winston Salem Dash in a, in a weekend series, you know, nobody knows who the Winston Salem Dash are. Nobody cares who they are. Um, so what we market we market you know, entertainment, you know, fireworks, inexpensive tickets, inexpensive food prices, a, a, a great way to to entertain and, and uh, either take your family out or entertain clients uh, at a game. Uh, I know that's what you know. The, the, the giveaways, the mascots, the, the video boards, the, the picnics, the hospitality. You know, those are those are things that we you know, we market and we sell. You know, I I challenge our staff every year that assume that we're going to lose every single game of the year. 
know, we're with the Wilmington Blue Rocks in 2012. We're going to go zero and 140. Knowing that, how do we get 4,500 people a night into, the, into our stadium? Right. Well, we do that by you know, offering inexpensive ticket prices, inexpensive food prices, you know, great entertainment, uh, great acts, fireworks, giveaways. Um, so that's you know, those are the things that we we can control. Those are the things that, and, and as a result, those are the things that we market. Now, now, Chris, what are some maybe the more of the, the memorable or clever marketing tactics that, that you guys have used or you've seen other teams use to bring in fans? Because I know sometimes, you know, you go back in history and there there are some crazy ways. Like I think it was the uh, Wrigley in Chicago. He attracted fans in some crazy ways. Anything that uh, stands out in your mind? Uh, well, I, I tell you, the, the, uh, um, one of the more unique things we've done here, and it turns out one of the more recent things we've done, is that we found we found an act called Cowboy Monkey Rodeo. I don't know if you have, and it's um, he actually performed. This guy performed uh, at the Denver Broncos recently. He got a lot of a lot of a uh, lot of notoriety for it. But we uh, okay, basically a, a uh, and it's almost hard to describe what he does, but I'm going to do my best to do it. If he, it's a, especially it's, it's a rodeo act, and one of our one of our ticket guys here found found it on YouTube of all places, I think. And uh, it, it's a rodeo act that we that we got to convince him actually to 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 try it at a minor league baseball game. And essentially, what he does is a couple of times during the game, and then he has a bigger show after the game. Is that he he brings on um, the field literally. Um, a half dozen uh, goats or rams, I think, or sheep, and they are herded by uh, capuchin monkeys that sit on a dog on a, some sort of a uh, border type collie. Oh my god! And they herd these animals, and it's uh, it's it, it's one of the most craziest things you've ever seen. Uh, and just to give you an idea, how uh, when we first brought him out the first year, we told him, "All right, uh, Tim, you're going to go out. The, you're going to go out the top of the third inning." Um, and his first question was, "Well, what, what time is that?" This guy had, no, you know, he had no no idea, no concept of baseball. Again, it's just a, it was a rodeo act. So, uh, but he caught on to minor league baseball, and now he must perform at twenty, thirty minor league teams a year. And like I said, he oh wow, Broncos. So he, um, but yeah, it's called Cowboy Monkey Rodeo. You can YouTube it. It's it's quite a it's quite a spectacle to see. Not only oh, yeah, on, we, we, on, on now Twitter, now when when, when I describe person. your interview, I'm gonna I'm gonna link to that now. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, so anyway. That's, that that gives you an idea of some of the things you know that how a minor league baseball team you know reaches out and pulls people into the stadium. You know, and, and one of the ways we do that is through entertainment acts, and and this is one of the more unique ones that you'll you'll probably see in a while. Well, you know, you mentioned earlier in the interview, uh, Chris, that you know you, you almost run a small business basically. So, you know, how would you say uh, your job in baseball is like entrepreneurship? You know, I, I kind of always like in. Baseball and entrepreneurship, you know, the, the, the test of wills almost and, and perseverance. You know, I always believe that, you know, kind of similar to a baseball season, uh, being an entrepreneur, which is what we gear tour, towards uh, at the financial bin, is more of a marathon than a sprint. So what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, there there are a lot of skills, I guess, we, uh, there are a lot of um, similarities, you know, with us and, you know, entrepreneurs. And, you know, it is a, it is a very unique business. You know, it's not yeah. a... Um, it's not a typical Monday through Friday nine to five job and or business. It, it's very unique, and it, it, it takes somebody, I think, who you know can, is, who can be very creative and, and and you know how to you know how to entertain your fan base, how to keep them coming back out, how to service them. You know what what can you do that's very unique that maybe some other similar entertainment destination. Uh, you know, doesn't provide. You know, what what can that be? What can we do to 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 make ourselves different than the movie theaters or the bowling alley or the you know local school carnival? Where uh, you know, because that is sort of our competition. You know, that is right. that is the decision a mom or a family has when they want to take the family out. You know, where where can we go? What can we do? So you know, how do we you know we challenge ourselves to to be more creative, to be different than those destinations? And uh, so you know, it is. It's it's it's. Um, I mean, you, you think of an entrepreneur, and you, and you think of a, a minor league baseball team, and I really think there are a lot of similarities. You know, you know, building off of that, Chris. Um, you know, there are, it's, a, it's really a tough economy out there. You know, people graduating. You know, they, they don't really have great job prospects. Um, 
so I guess you know, say some people want to get into baseball or get into sports. What what would the what would a Chris Kempel recommendation be? Like, what, what's one tip you could give Generation Y, somebody who wants to get involved in, in minor league baseball or become a GM? What would you say to them? Well, what I, what I, the way I typically answer that question, Dave, is that I, if somebody wants to get in baseball, actually, it's, it's fairly easy in that there are, especially at the minor league level, there are a lot of, a lot of teams out there. I think there's 160 or so across the country. Um, but you need to be prepared for a couple of things. One, you need to be prepared to probably start off at, at a relatively low salary, um, and then you got to be prepared to to move to, to relocate. You know, if you can handle those two obstacles, the, the odds of, of get or the chance of getting a job in, in minor league baseball are, are pretty good. Um, you know, maybe at a at a sort of a an internship level type position. But once you get in, um, I tell people that. Um, once you're with a team, volunteer for everything. You know, do everything humanly possible to, um, you know, what, what. For example, we have um, we have eight seasonal people that here that, that we bring on board every year. Basically, they're got people that just out of college, just graduated from college, want to want to get a job and you know want wanted to work in sports. So this is sort of their first um, their first go at it. And what I what I tell them is is that on September 15th. And because that is that's the day when their position sort of dissolves, mm-hmm. they say on September fifteenth, your job is to make it so that I cannot let you walk out that door. That you've done so much for this team here, you volunteered for everything, you've done everything we've asked, gone above and beyond, you know whatever we we've we've asked you to do. Um, that you you your job is to put me in a position that on September fifteenth that I I cannot afford to let you walk out that door. If I do, that the the organization itself would be would, would take a step backwards. Wow. Well, I mean, I think that's fantastic advice. Not even just for someone trying to get into baseball or sports, but just in general, because yeah, some sure. people don't have that's that so, yeah, mentality. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's applicable to just about any you know any job. Now, when, when do you guys start the season? Do you start tomorrow night? Uh, we do on the road. In fact, it's it's. Uh, I think I was a couple of minutes calling you late because our team just got on the bus and is heading for. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. We'll play tomorrow, oh, wow. and then uh, we our first home game is a week from tomorrow, April thirteenth. So um, we're looking forward to that day. Now, now, Chris, where can everyone get in contact with you, learn more about the Blue Rocks, and attend a game? Uh, probably the easiest way to learn more about the Blue Rocks is to visit our website, uh, bluerocks.com. dot com. Um, you know, they can learn just about anything from how to get tickets, you know, what our promotions are, what, what we're doing this year, how the team's doing. Um, so, yeah, www.bluerocks.com. Are you guys on Twitter or Facebook? Uh, we we are. Yep, you can follow us on, 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 on both of those. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, so it's, uh, uh, I appreciate the time, and thanks for having me. No problem, Chris. It's, it's really been a pleasure, a pleasure. I know I learned a lot, and I'm sure the listeners did as well. Well, good. All right, good luck this season. Thanks a lot. All right, thank you. All right, take care. All right, everybody, that was Chris Kempel. He's a general manager, or as I guess as he would say, the director of operations, baseball operations, for the Wilmington Blue Rocks in Wilmington, Delaware. Now make sure to check them out at bluerocks.com, and I will make sure to post uh, their, their, their Twitter and Facebook accounts as well. I want to thank you guys for joining us. It is a beautiful day out there. I'm here in Newtown, Pennsylvania. I will soon be watching my Phyllis take on the Pirates. Uh, I hope you are you are enjoying uh, you know the, a, a game today somewhere. Whether you got off from work or you're getting out early, I hope you really enjoy it. And I want to thank you for joining us. Make sure to check out financialbid.com for the latest on personal finance and entrepreneurial advice for Generation Y. And make sure you pick up your copy of Entrepreneur Intervention. As I said, enjoy MLB Opening Day. I'll be pulling for my fighting fills. Till next time, I'm David Domzowski. Thank you so much for listening.